Welcome back everyone as we're having more fossil capaxion and we're gonna start off today's video with a shadow polyrath up in front having at the back Ludicolo with red steel. So this team is looking to be pretty scary on the charge attacks factor but at the same time you can push a little bit extra with that razor leaf damage or even with the shadow counters. So let's see what is happening here as we're getting our hands right straight ahead on the zap cannon to finish off this tentacle. So I get chance here not only to survive the move but also to push for that second shield while they might be in a very difficult situation to completely farm it down. That's why they let the move go through and now Quaxer can farm up a ton of energy. However, they mess up here, they throw the Aqua Tail, perhaps they were thinking we could reach on that uh, Focus Blast and I want to keep my Ludicolo protected here and of course kinda hidden for the very end game. However, they end up having something like a Skarmory which is a heavy Pokemon for my Ludicolo but hopefully here we can charge up to a double of those dynamic punches, get the shield out of the way and almost guarantee the knockout over Skarmory. Now with Ludicolo remaining on the very end game against their team and of course since we have a double shield we can easily finish them off with style to begin to taste content in the most positive way possible into the next team uh, that we're gonna battle and we're having a lantern up in front. So we're just gonna keep going at it with my dynamic punches and I believe that we can do so much damage at them if we can land at least one and not only that but we also managed to catch the move on Red Steel. So Red Steel is about to survive those moves and of course has the severe opportunity here to push for the shield over that Lucario and I know that whatever I, th I throw here is still gonna be blocked so that's why I'm gonna go for the Zap Cannon over Focus Blast. In the process they farm up a ton of energy and if I can block here twice perhaps I can get the chance to completely farm down with my shadow counters. Down goes Lucario, so much damage though has to be made by those moves. Lantern follows the same fate and now at the very end the Scavalier emerges into the battle. Now I get here to a very bad move and that is Ice Wind. My opponent was definitely expecting this and as you can see I definitely mess this up because right now we are just in a difficult situation and we cannot do anything. If I could go for the non-bait move I could easily win this but uh, my opponent absolutely read me down to asses and yeah I lost this one because I messed up with the charge attack. Into the next game now and we're having Polyrath on the mirror. However we got a shadow and they have a shiny which is pretty great, a pretty nice phenomenon here and I guess that the dynamic fun can absolutely seal the deal. So I'm trying to surprise them but at the same time they can survive by shielding and staying a little bit longer to provide some extra pressure on my Ludicolo. Perhaps I couldn't go here for the shield, I could let that move go through but they end up switching in there with their lantern which means that their final Pokemon has to be something like a Mad Boy. So I decide to take the move and it ends up being the Thunderbolt which is gonna connect for a ton of damage but before they farm us down we can do so much work with our Razor Leaf. So at this point I realize that I have the shield advantage and also I can easily farm down in the process with those lock-ons. So the lock-on farm down is imminent, we can survive pretty much whatever they throw, this is how good our Pokemon can be able to snipe down that uh, Polyrath which emerges into the battle with my own Polyrath and now Jellicent is their final Pokemon. So the good news here is that they are still switch locked in here with me even when my Polyrath is gonna go down and also we have already dropped them at the point that one Zap Cannon might actually do the trick over that Jellicent. So by blocking the move we can still get on the Zap Cannon to guarantee the nook and the knockout, down goes Jellicent and Lantern has nothing to throw here so down they go a, a little bit later into the next one now with an Escavalier up in front and I guess that my Polyrath might actually have a great time here as, as, as long as uh, we block those aerial aces. So it ends up being the acid spray on the first one and right on the CMP I'm just gonna go for the Ice Wind but my opponent went for the Overfarm. I don't know what happened there, I was expecting for sure the aerial ace, perhaps they never had that move and now that I'm thinking about it, well they had acid spray so perhaps 
perhaps Driller was their next move. Anyways, it is what it is, and now they are left with a Ludicolo and that Kingdra. So my Ludicolo here will try to apply some pressure on their shields with that Skull, and now that Kingdra is the only Pokemon that can severely hurt me, I'm just gonna try to take the first move, while I can easily reach here to a Focus Blast and we can guarantee the knockout, even though we're getting pretty low on that uh, HP after that uh, second move that they're gonna throw and they end up going for the Outrage. This is Outrageous! And now before we go down, we get the chance to snipe them with that final Focus Blast, which is pretty great, able to do one more lock on damage and this is absolutely crucial because we survive, they do not and that's gonna be a fantastic victory for our Ludicolo on the very end. In the next one now, as we're having the battle of the Water Shadows and we're having a Polyrath over Quaxer, we can easily survive one charge attack while the second is gonna be kinda problematic, but till then we can easily land the dynamic punch over the seals, sometimes they do not block with their Quaxers because they're expecting something like a nice win, but we know better snapping them down with a single dynamic. Now they have a lantern at the back and that's why I, I, that's why I switched out on my Registeel to provoke their final Pokemon out of play, do as much work as I can over that Pokemon and of course now we can keep our Ludicolo for the very end game. Also here we get the perfect opportunity to get the second shield out of the game and with that in mind now we can definitely take advantage of the two shield uh, flex that we have, tank one move which is pretty great and the reason I tank the move was because I was uh, about to block a acid spray so I was like perhaps that is the acid spray, no reason to block that move but they end up going for the RLAs no matter what. So the battle is definitely not over yet but the Leafstorm cannot be handled by that poor lantern and uh, of course even with a debuff razor leaf is just enough to finish off uh, as cavalier that was an amazing battle and right straight ahead into the next one as we're facing something like a magnezone i guess up in front on the switch as the polar earth emerges we can easily tank one move and now we are left with a little bit of hp which means that even if magnezone returns here they are still gonna be switch locked in there with me and they cannot farm up a ton of energy, just one Volt Switch. So in the process we're just gonna get our hands on the Icy Wind to try and debuff them a little bit while drawing a Silt in the process and one more Icy Wind before we go down. However they end up catching the move on Azumarill which is still pretty great because now our Red Steel can have the upper hand with a Zap Cannon for sure. At this point I realize that this is no Hydro Pump at all and even if it was I was just fine with that information because I could easily survive the move and provide the extra amount of pressure on the end at the same time. So another move is coming up, this time this is gonna be another play rough, we don't care at all as we're farming out completely and now Magnuson returns but we still have two seals and one Fox Blast is already being unleashed over the end. So I guess that by blocking here twice we should be on the optimal spot at completely destroying them down. However, I have a feeling that one mirror shot is uh, absolutely crucial here and they get on the move right after that next ball switch. That caught me definitely off guard, hopefully we can survive and one more Fox Blast will definitely finish them off. Now this is a race to the farm down but they had only one HP and that lock on was absolutely on spot. Into the next one now trainers with a Perserker up in front, absolutely an awesome lead for us while we're meeting up with the, the stockpiled Pokemon on the Switch. This one is gonna get to those Weather Balls for sure, while we can tank them, we can tank them we can also unleash a lot of pressure on the end with a simple zap cannon and we can do that effectively by drawing some shields along the way. So I guess that uh, we can easily survive here another weather ball while we get the chance to reach yet to another huge zap cannon and they end up catching on the Perseguer. This is absolutely an amazing catch considering the fact that Polyrath can easily destroy down that Perseguer and now that we switch out on our Polyrath, well 
well, they have the perfect plan for us because Jellicent is definitely gonna wall us down. It doesn't matter though, we know that at some point we might be able to switch out on our Ludicolo and survive with those two shields till the very end game because Razor Leaf is definitely gonna come back to haunt them with that uh, sweeping scenario. Before we go down, another Ice Wind, this time to debuff them even further, down we go to their moves, they switch out to clear the debuffs and at the same time we can provide some extra pressure with Red Steel. Uh, so the pressure is absolutely mental here because we make them drop some energy and right after Ludicolo can easily farm down completely here without breaking any sweat at all. So I decided to take the move, this is just a, a weather ball, not even the hurricane and this has to be another weather ball to be fair. So we can easily survive those moves, they are double resisted and by getting those two shields till the very end game we are absolutely on the right track on winning this one. So it's Cavalier once again up in front, it is already midnight here on my battles and I guess that RLAs has to be blocked if we want to have any chance at all and before they get to another one I get the perfect chance here to reach to another Ice Wind to debuff them even further. Also we can get out of here with a ton of energy and in doing so I sacrifice both of my shields. So Lantern now comes into the game and I have the dynamic punch to destroy them down and connect for a little bit of extra damage. At the very end Fair Alligator exits so you can already tell by my smile that we might be in a very good spot, especially when we have a Ludicolo with Razor Leaf as our closer in this particular battle. So I decided to go ahead and push even further here with another Fox Blast, but before we get there, they can easily snipe us down with a Hydro. Now Polarath returns and what we were trying to do here is to provide some extra pressure on, the, on that Fair Alligator so that they're gonna throw the remaining energy that they have. With that in mind we can easily farm down and of course Lantern has nothing to throw at us, whatever they do can easily be manageable by our HP and of course we can farm down with those Razor Leaves. I'm telling you Ludicolo is such a beast. Into the final one out trainers with an arguably good lead against Ferrothorn and now Lantern is on the switch. This is perfect news for us as we are gonna get on the dynamic punch and the plan was that if they block we are just gonna go ahead and switch out on Ludicolo but since they didn't I can easily stay in a little bit more and I'm gonna get on the knockout and another dynamic punch this time for the Polarath. So I can easily let my Polarath go down because we might be in a bad situation with Ludicolo uh, facing at some point Ferrothorn but keep in mind that the alignment is still on our side because Red Steel is perfectly aligned with Ferrothorn and Ludicolo with Polyrath. So that is gonna be an amazing one to end today's content and before you go trainers leave a huge like, subscribe to my content and I hope to see you all into the next one.